Welcome to this quick guide to learn the fundamentals of Memento Yearbook in just 12 minutes and become a star designer. When you log in, you'll notice the main menu on the left and the features related to each selected tab on the right. By default, you'll land in the Edit Book section. Initially, your cover will be blank, and you'll have an intro section with one page. At the top of the screen, you'll also see important information like your page limit and the deadlines for submitting your cover and final yearbook. We recommend initially setting up your basic book layout. Let's click on Check Out the Book to perform these operations, as we need to ensure no one else is working on the book while you're changing its structure. To get started, let's create a sports section by clicking the Add section plus icon, and then we'll create a grade 6 portrait section. Using multiple sections allows you to easily reorganize them later to fit your design, rather than moving individual pages. Next, let's add some pages. In the intro section, click the plus icon to add two pages automatically and change the number of pages from two to six in the Add Pages section. Then go to the Sports section and click the plus icon to add six pages. Reordering sections is a breeze. For instance, if you want to move the Grade 6 section before the Sports section, just click Move Sections at the bottom of the screen. Then, it's as easy as dragging the Portrait section above the Sports section. Once you're satisfied, Click Move Sections again to lock in your changes. And that's it. Now you know the basics to create your yearbook layout. Click on Manage Team in the left panel to start building your dream team. Memento Yearbook allows multiple users to collaborate and work on the yearbook simultaneously. You have three levels of permissions to choose from. Editors-in-Chief are admins with full control. Editors have all permissions except editing portraits. Staffers can only work on pages assigned to them, making this role perfect for younger students or ensuring everyone only works on their designated tasks. Now, let's create a staffer. Click on Add New Staffer. We'll start by adding Lila Everhart. Set her username and, optionally, an email. Then, ensure her role as staffer and set a default password. Finally, click Add User. You can add as many users as you need. Click on Yearbook Photo Albums to start adding photos. First, click on New Album, name it Students, and then click Add Album. Once the album is created, click on it and select Upload Photos. Choose the photos you want to add and click Open. After uploading, you can always Upload more photos, select some or all photos, move them to another folder, delete them, or download them. You can create as many albums as you'd like. Next, click on Community Photo Albums to enable anyone to upload photos during events like dances, sports, and more. Click on Set Up Community Photo Albums and create a unique password that will be required to access the Upload Photo app. This adds an extra layer of security over who can upload photos. Click Set Password to confirm. Click on New Album and name it Football. Be sure to select Create Matching Album as this will automatically create an album with the same name on the yearbook side, making the proofing process smoother. Finally, click Add Album to complete the process. Next, hover your mouse over the newly created album and click on the horizontal menu. Then select Get Shareable Link. Click Copy Link to share with parents or anyone else you want to grant photo upload access. Remember to provide them with the password you set earlier for secure access. During events, Parents will be actively taking photos to capture memorable moments. After the event, review the photos uploaded by parents. Select the best ones and move them to the yearbook's football folder so they can be included in the yearbook layout. Click on Manage Portraits to add student photos from the school photo shoot. Since you'll be changing the book's structure, click Check Out first. Next, click Import People to access the Upload PSPA feature set. Click on Upload PSPA Index and select the index file provided by your school photographer. Review the imported index to ensure the columns match the portrait's data, as some school photographers might have altered the order. Don't worry, though. Most of the time, everything is correct. Once confirmed, click Import People to finalize the process. It will only take a few seconds. The final step is to import the photos. Click OK, oh, got it. Then select Import Photos. You can either drag and drop your photos directly onto the upload area or click on it to open the Import dialog. When the File dialog opens, navigate to the folder where the photos are stored. 
usually alongside the index file. Select all the photos and click Open. The import process will begin and may take a few minutes, depending on the number of portraits. Once the upload is complete, click the back button to view all the imported portraits. You can edit and make any changes as needed. For more detailed instructions, check out specific video tutorials on using the Portrait Manager. Now that we've imported our portraits, let's flow the Grade 6 section into the yearbook. Click on the Edit Book tab and select Add Portrait Pages for the Grade 6 section. A dialog box will open with a variety of predefined queries to choose from. In the Search Group field, enter 6 to find Grade 6. I'm going to flow all the teachers by selecting them, then clicking the middle arrow to move them into the section. You can add as many queries as you want per section, but I recommend using one query type per section. It makes restructuring and formatting easier later on. Click Next Step to validate the order of portraits. If needed, you can reorder teachers or flow them differently. When you're satisfied, click Next Step. Now, choose the default portrait template. You'll have three options to pick from, but don't worry, you can always change the template later. After selecting your template, click Next Step. In the final step, review your layout. If you're happy with it, click Add to Book. The process will take a few seconds and your grade 6 teachers will be successfully flowed into the yearbook. Let's customize the look of our portraits. Move the mouse over a portrait page, then click the Edit button to open the editor. Click on the Portraits tab on the left to begin customizing. Keep in mind, you'll need to check out the yearbook, as customizing portraits may involve adding or removing pages. By default, any layout changes will apply to the entire section, but you can also modify individual pages. Personally, I prefer working with multiple sections and making changes by section, as it speeds up the process. You can adjust the template visuals as well as the number of columns and rows. For example, Let's quickly choose the Side Label option. If you're still on the same page, you can always use the Undo function. However, note that changing the page will reset the Undo history, so previous changes can't be undone after that. The Portraits feature offers extensive customization options. You can adjust the title format, change the title height, fit all teachers on one page, enable salutations, display titles, split names, modify margins, and tweak row and column spacing just to name a few. Let's hide the page thumbnails at the bottom to give us a better view of the current page. Now let's focus on customizing the look of the portraits. Click on the Visual tab, and just like with the portrait flow, you can modify all the portraits in the section, just the current page, or even a specific portrait. This is especially useful if you want to highlight someone in particular. Click on any portrait, and you'll see a range of options appear at the top. Let's start by clicking on border and turning on the switch. From here, you can adjust the border size and color. You can also add a shadow or change the shape. Let's try rounding the corners or even better, switching it to an oval. You can customize the text in a similar way, click on a label and you can add a shadow or modify any text attribute, like turning all the text bold. You can also turn off specific portrait frames to create empty spaces that fit your design. For example, you could leave a square in the middle of the page to add a decorative element, like a heart or other design feature. For a deeper dive into these features, be sure to check out our dedicated tutorial on portraits. Now, let's take a quick overview of the editor's feature set. First, enable the page thumbnail view by clicking on the Pages icon on the left. Then, select the first page in the intro section to begin editing. Click on the layout icon on the left side to browse. As you can see, we offer book templates ranging from preschool to high school. Click on a template to browse the available layouts. Let me show you a few examples. When you find a layout that fits your style, simply click on it and it will automatically apply to your page. The editor is designed to be user-friendly. To edit a text item, simply click on it and the text menu will appear at the top. For example, to add a shadow effect, Click on Shadow to reveal more options in the left pane, make adjustments, and turn it off again if needed. To further customize text, click on the Text menu to access options such as changing the text color, font, size, and alignment. You can also adjust character spacing and add effects like an outline for a cool look. 
Let me show you how I can change the font and add an outline. If you want to fine-tune the spacing between lines, click on a new text item and adjust the line spacing. You can also resize the text box and even rotate it to fit your design style. To add photos to your page, click on the Photo tab icon and then navigate to the Students folder. From there, drag and drop a photo into an image frame. You can zoom in on the photo by clicking the magnifier icon and holding the mouse button or pan the photo by clicking the pan button and dragging it. Just like with text, you can also rotate and resize the image frame. Take a look at the available options in the menu bar. You can add a border with customizable size and color, apply shadows, change the shape, such as adding rounded corners, and even apply image effects to tweak the photo to your liking. Lastly, if you want to swap images between two frames, Hold the control key, click on another image frame, then access image tools and press swap images. Let's move on to the next page. To add an image frame, click on the image frame icon at the top right. Now let's navigate to the football folder and drop a few images onto the page. You can drop images directly onto the page, even without an image frame. Next, let's pick a football themed template. As you can see, when you apply a layout, it preserves all the content currently on the page while reformatting it to fit the selected layout. Let's go ahead and edit another page. You can access a vast library of thousands of clip arts by selecting a category or using the search bar to find specific items like football. Just drag and drop the clip art you want onto your page. You can also customize the color of any clip art. Simply select the item, click on Image FX in the menu bar, and adjust the Hue Rotate slider until you get the color you're looking for. Applying a background is just as simple. Go to the Background folder, pick a category, and click on the background you want to apply it instantly to your page. These are just a few of the many features available in the editor. To explore more, check out our knowledge base for article tutorials or video guides. With Memento Yearbook, everyone can become a star designer. Visit mementoyearbooks.com and contact us to get started.